these classes around Wonder what to pick, don't wanna end up feeling I'm hitting with the sticks, so think Think, use your brain, think Bruce said, be like water, let that sink Paladins and warriors, does anyone play DK? Unholy, maybe, frost? Ain't no way, but hey, retribution might be the solution Welcome to WoW, the Blake Melee Revolution The boom, the pow, the wow, the wreck Forget the past, the place your bet with no regret Big numbers, undying in the good tier set Make no mistake, this is the age of red I bet your ass is thinking we are just hyping up the class since everyone and their mom is playing a red paladin at the moment. They are, but we aren't. Never in the history of our WoW experience has red ever been an S tier spec. How long have you waited? How many raids, patches, expansions have come and gone and you hope that maybe one day, one day, Red can stand out with the greats. Well, I don't know what or who came crawling out of the woodworks at Blizzard, probably medicine, but after a full rework and multiple buffs, Retribution Paladin finally made it to the top. S tier baby all the way. And not just any S tier, but Raid S tier. Yo, are you out of your mind? Raids have always been the weak spot of Red, at least for as long as we have been playing WoW. I'm not saying Red was the worst spec in the game, but it has never been the best spec in the game. Don't get me wrong, Red isn't broken or overpowered. Not yet anyway. Not sure what people will figure out in the future, but Red is strong. And not just strong. After the multiple buffs it received, it climbed higher and higher and higher. I know a lot of people are always gonna hate and complain, and I say, fuck them, let them, their loss. It was about damn time Retribution Paladin got the spot at the top of the mountain it deserved. Let me tell you why I am not just overhyping the hell out of this spec. It all changed with wings. This one singular ability changed everything for Red Paladin and it happened back in the Burning Crusade expansion. You cannot give a class angelic avenging wings and not expect it to be a kickass DPS. This settled the theme of badassery into Red and likely created many Red mains alone. There are few if not no actual DPS cooldowns that give you a more killer feeling than popping your wings, hearing that iconic sound and seeing your character light up and prepare to slap. Even though it was never a king in PvE, it has always been a beast during wings. Pressing Avenging Wrath always made Red feel incredible and actually do incredible damage. It was only a matter of time before everything came full circle after the rework made wings only have one minute cooldown. But Avenging Wrath wasn't all. How can you make a spec that's supposed to be all about justice and enacting punishment on the evil better? by giving them execution sentence in mob, that's how. But the coolness of red didn't stop there, it got Wake of Ashes from the Ashbringer in Legion and Final Reckoning in Shadowlands, at least that expansion was good for something. With the Dragonflight rework, now red has an actual good talent tree that makes use of all of these cool thematic abilities that red is supposed to have. It's very hard not to look at red paladin and think, yeah, that's pretty cool. And cool is an important factor in playing something since you look at it every day, hear it every day and show it off to others every day. And for the longest time red has just been a background light bulb since people had to scroll the DPS meters or the looking for group list to find you. But not anymore. Even before the buffs, red has been the most played spec in the game ever since it received the rework. But are reworks enough to make something the most popular thing in the game? Nope, Shadow Priest didn't get this much love, Rogue still isn't seeing this love and not even Demon Hunter at the moment. And if you don't believe me, we can look at one source of data that is publicly available to everyone. As of writing this script, in Mythic Amirdrasil, Red is very close to Beast Mastery in terms of its popularity. 
Most, if not all, Mythic Raiders will likely record their logs more than anyone else in the game. Now, Brett isn't number one here, most likely because we are recording this video just one reset after the buffs, and for Mythic Raiders that can clear Farak might take some time to swap their rosters to get some Retribution Paladins in. On Heroic, however, things are less rigid, and Red is exploding in popularity. Heroic Raiders are likely the majority of Raiders in the community, at least when it comes to recording your logs. There are probably hundreds of guilds that raid normals and never touch Warcraft logs as well. Since this is the only source of information we can use to get an accurate depiction of what the people are playing, we can only infer the rest. But this is not everything. It shouldn't be a surprise that Mythic Plus is more popular than Raids. The barrier of entry is smaller, the content is easier to do and is more accessible to all kinds of players. It takes 30 to 45 minutes to clear a key, as opposed to the 2 to 4 hours a Raid night usually eats up. In Season 1, Paladin received its rework midway through and, what do you know, Red was crushing it in terms of the most played spec by the end. The postseason saw it dip slightly below protection but still kept it in the family. Season 2 saw even more people play Red and the game in general, with a switch in the postseason most likely due to how Demon Hunter was actually broken at the time just after its rework. And now we get to Season 3 where the numbers just seem to be out of this world. Red currently at over 1 million parses. A parse is essentially one run of a dungeon in this case, or one kill of a raid boss. 1 million parses is almost 5 times the amount of Season 2. Not only is Red crushing it in popularity, but very, very convincingly. I would imagine the legendary plays a part in people wanting this spec, but Red isn't the only one able to use it. And still, the growth in numbers is incredible. I'm sure there's a video topic here somewhere about Dragonfly becoming a better and better expansion. Shadowlands Season 1 and 3, which were the best, barely had a quarter of today's numbers, and BFA's best season also barely getting 25% of the way to the 10.2 numbers. The number of red parses that exist currently is almost half of those of an entire past season of all of the specs in the game, and it surpasses a few as well, and we are only halfway through this season. And even though this video is about retribution and the other specs are still played vastly more than before, Red just sits on a totally different level, and I imagine it's only going to get better from here on out. Why is Red so popular? Is it because of the damage it can deal? A lot of people would have you believe that, but we clearly just saw Red was crushing it even before it did this much damage. The buffs definitely help and work as a big incentive for people, but obviously they aren't everything. The M Plus season is clearly a bigger success than what we have had before and it plays a no small part to Red being so popular. But that would only explain the actual number of people playing it and not the fact that it's the most played class. No, there are a few more reasons. It's simple. The spec is very simple to play. This is not a negative thing. This is the opener you want in single target and is literally the most complex thing Red does. Since Execution Sentence is a ramp style cooldown, this is the one time you want to be strict with your abilities and you only cast like three of them with the exception of your cooldowns. In terms of simplicity, Beast Mastery has been up there with Red for the longest time and it is also a simple spec and not currently broken for people to argue that its damage is pushing it up the rankings. Simple is not bad, if anything, simple is desired. We made a lot of videos talking about WoW's current design and one common theme is that modern WoW is too complicated. From the gearing system to the professions, raid and mythic plus mechanics, it's no surprise people are scraping for something that won't tax their brains even further to the point of self-combustion. Which is funny because that's how our Patreon works, it doesn't, but it does support the content that we're making, content such as this video. Our Patreon is also a gateway to more Marcel online content like early access videos, bloopers and 4k customized wallpapers with your character's transmog on them plus a bunch more things so if you want to support the content and you want to see more of this in the future consider checking the link down below to our patreon.com slash online profile and see if there's something there for you. 
Back to WoW being complicated, it makes perfect sense that people want something simple with a low investment rate and a small barrier of entry to offset all this other stuff they have to juggle. That's one thing, but if simple was all it took, we wouldn't also see Protection Paladin also having over half a million parses. Difficult healers also high up here way above much simpler specs. No, there has to be more. We already covered the cool badass aspect of red, which funny enough can also apply to the demon hunter specs also crushing it at the top. But there is again another thing they have in common. They are just really good design specs. When we say designed, it doesn't tell you much. It sounds more like a buzzword than anything else. And all of the stuff I mentioned so far factors into the design of red. But there is more to it, clearly. Red has had some major issues with its kit to avoid saying design again for a lot of years. Remember when red was one of the squishiest specs in the game? As early as Shadowlands or even in the first season of Dragonflight? Man, how things have changed, where now red is one of the tankiest specs in the game. Talk about a 180. Yes, yes, I will talk about a 180. Remember when red was struggling with dealing damage because it was immobile and couldn't have a good amount of uptime on the targets because of mechanics and other things? That all changed with most of your abilities having a cast range. 20 yards on your Blade of Justice and Final Verdict. 30 yards for Judgment, Hammer of Wrath and Execution Sentence and... Wait, what am I doing? You only have two actual melee abilities, Crusader Strike, which can be baked into your auto attacks now, and Divine Storm, which calling it melee is a matter of perspective. Actually, your Crusader Strike and melee attacks have three additional yards to their range, so are you still a melee class? If you haven't yet played Red, you have no idea what it means to be able to deal damage outside of the range of Blade Storms. Sanguine Puddles, Fire Puddles, Frontal Cones and so much more. You thought Acrobatic Strikes for Rogues was cheating? <laughs> Lol. Talk to Warriors and see what they think. And speaking of Warriors, boy how the tables have turned. I don't know if I can remember a time when Fury and Arms were not above Red in all aspects of the game. Now Red is literally destroying both of these two specs and I only have two words to say. Sanctified Plates. This one talent covers more than what a handful of passives and talents do for the warrior specs. And Red still has talents that increase armor and other stats. But Sanctified Plates tells the story of the millions and billions of Red deaths that have happened in the history of the world. Of Warcraft. Red is tankier than Arms and Fury, does more damage than Arms and Fury, and provides the group with better utility than Arms and Fury. If your group desperately needs tankiness, Devotionara gives everyone a permanent 3% damage reduction, which in the course of a fight soaks up way more damage than Rallying Cry ever could. Red Aura gives everyone damage and healing. Freedom gets them out of slows and roots, which are a big thing on Yigira, Laradar and Tindril, but also in a lot of dungeons that use movement impairing effects, not to mention it negates an entire affix. You can dispel poisons, which are deadly this season in Mythic Plus. You can turn evil, one of those other affixes that exist. Use sacrifice to actually give someone an extra defensive cooldown or blessing of protection to immune physical damage and defects completely. Fully heal a target, combat resurrect a target, actually off heal people, bubble taunt to save your tank while you take no damage. <laughs> Why even play a warrior? And this applies to Death Knight as well. Do you understand what a perfect class means? And hey, did you get your legendary yet? Because you can and it does a lot of damage for red, since red wants haste and versatility as stats. The legendary procs a damage effect in the form of a dot. Versatility increases the damage of item effects and haste increases the damage of dots. So put two and two together and you get red or four. As sad as it is for a former main warrior and death knight to admit, Retribution Paladin is today the only plate class worth playing. And if you want to do yourself some service, go pick yours up and enjoy what the devs actually managed to create a perfect melee DPS. 
But if you are still a warrior lover, check this video we made on Arms vs Fury where we tackle the differences between the specs in both raids and dungeons and settle on a winner based on their strengths and weaknesses.